Hello programmers, today we're going to look at a chess app to make it more dry and improve its class design. If you want to improve your code, ask me live on Twitch at twitch.tv slash dragger. Here we go. Cool chess. Cool, we got a GUI and stuff. Uh, I imagine this is a decent sized project, so where should I focus? Where do you want feedback on the most? And what kind of feedback do you want? Game handler. There's no game handler. Game model? Oh, chessboard handler you mean? feel like this isn't dry. Well, there you go. Wait, what, what is this doing? Is that updating potential move spots? Wait, what, what is what is this? What, why are these empty? What's going on here? So pawn is like interesting, but what about rook, for example, or bishop? Let's see. Wait, what? Why would it matter whether it's... Oh, okay. Yeah. Gotcha, gotcha. This definitely don't look dry to me. This is all right. This looks like the problem. So I'm curious, why do you have this movement class? Maybe this movement class is causing problems for you. Like it, it mental problems, like preventing you from thinking about better design. Cause I saw like you have this, these empty functions. I don't know where you use this stuff, but this looks concerning. Not because it's empty, but because who's gonna call it? I suspect you don't have anything calling your movement methods polymorphically. So as far as like drawing this up, what I would do is look at the differences. Let's put them side by side. Rook model. Okay, so we got this. And we got this. Side by side. I mean, highlight the differences. You can't see it, but there's like the white piece and there's black piece. And then here there's white piece, black piece. So that looks like it's the only difference. What you could do is say, you can make a function that's is enemy piece. So you have is black piece, you could say is enemy piece. Yeah, you could say is enemy piece. And then you give it the current player and then you give it the position and it tells you whether there's a match. Does that make sense? That is just an idea. There might be a better idea. Another idea is get piece color. Is this equal to selected piece color? So give me whether this is black and white. Actually, this would be not equals. Obviously, wouldn't have both of these in the same thing, but I'm liking this is enemy piece. If it's an enemy, then we can step on it, but we can't go even any further, so we have to stop looping. So that would cut rook model in half, which is what I think you're looking for. Is that dry? And I think you could use the same technique for bishop as well, because it looks like it has the same problem. So if we ignore the color aspect, you have the diagonal left, up left, up right, down left, down right. You spell diagonal like a three different ways. <laughs> See, the, the main difference is that one, the bounds, and two, the direction that you're going. See, here you're going negative, negative, here you're going negative, positive, here you're going positive, negative, and here you're going positive, positive. So one insight you could have is that this is the same as plus equals one, plus equals one, and then negative cases, minus equals one, minus equals one. In other words, plus equals negative one. See that, that this is uh, down right, and this is up left would be plus equals negative one, plus equals negative one. So now there's there's more similarity. I'm making these these two very similar. That is what I'm trying to do. You also have the starting position. So plus negative one, plus negative one. And for both, we can check both of these conditions, I think. Hopefully I've done like simple enough transformations that you can see it preserves the behavior exactly. But now it's very, you see very similar things. The only differences are these, these ones are either positive or negative. So what you could do is put this loop into a function and parameterize the, the minus one, minus one, plus one, plus one. I like to call it dx, as in like delta x and delta y, but you're using i and j, or row and tile. I'll call it delta i and delta j. You can pick better names. For this particular case, they're both negative one. So delta i, delta j, delta j, delta i. You would put this into a function like, you know, private, void, whatever, whatever. Check one diagonal of stuff and inst delta i, inst delta j, and then 
you know, you got all this stuff. And then you would call check one diagonal, diagonal. Now you got me confused how to spell it. <laughs> Pass in the stuff, and then you have delta i, which would be plus one, plus one, minus, minus, minus. It would look like that. Or you could have a loop around something. I think function calls is probably the best. You know, I took some shortcuts, but hopefully you see the pattern. You could do the same thing, not with just bishop, but with rook, because rook has to go one way. You know, it has to... Wait, hold on. Doesn't rook also go four directions? You're only going two directions. Oh, you split it up into horizontal movement and vertical movement. So I don't know why you split it up that way, but you could do the same technique with uh, rook vertical you know because you have to check the four directions except for for rook instead of having something like this it'll be you'll have plus one and zero and you'll have minus one and zero and you'll have zero and minus one and zero and plus one it'll sound like this for rook bishop like you wouldn't use the same function here because the well, maybe you could use the same function, actually. You might be able to use the exact same function for both rook and for bishop. And, I guess, queen. Queen, you could use bishop and rook. Combine them two and you get a queen. So these are reusable functions. Or this, rather, this is a reusable function. Even nicer. How's that drive for you? King, I don't think, can use the same exact logic. At least, you won't be able to use this function with the king. Another thing related to dry is you have this a lot, where you make a pair and then you add it. One thing you can do to remove some repetition is to just do that. Another thing you could do to produce repetition is instead of using array list directly, I recommend making domain types so you can have a, a move list type or something. And then what with move lists, you can say just this. You add a, you have a function add that takes in the, the file in the rank so you don't have to keep saying new pair. So that reduces also, that would um, reduce the duplication here. You would say it's not a move list necessarily because the order of the moves don't matter, I don't think. So it's just a move set. So you could say that. If you make custom types, then you can make nice syntax for using those uh, custom collection types. But at the very least, you can just merge these two lines into one line because you repeat in a bunch of spots, like all over. In fact, what you could do is say, like for pawn, to make a function, which does all this work. Private void add check pawn move row into tile and the other stuff you need. And you can throw that in there and get rid of these plus ones. And just like earlier, you have to do both bounds checks. So you have to check greater than zero, but now you can say check pawn move uh, row plus one, tile plus one, and then row plus one, tile minus one, and all that stuff. Actually, look, it looks like it depends on the black and the whiteness. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Maybe this won't work. I don't know. I'd say just play around with things. Just look at into using, look at patterns for things, because you probably copy pasted a lot of this. Look at the pattern you used for copy pasting and see if you can do some basic math or just put some things into variables and then just find the patterns. Common ways to factor out those patterns are functions, classes, and loops. A function might be appropriate here. You might have multiple functions. You might have something like add if enemy or empty. Like if you made that custom type, you could say add if enemy or empty. You can do bounds checking in this function, so you don't need to do bounds checking outside. And we're already checking enemy, and we already know we're a pawn, so you could just say this. Well, actually, you know, you, because your pawns, because black can only move in one direction, white can only move in another direction. So what you might do is say row plus, or black is plus. Yeah. How do you do the plus two? Do you not do the plus two? How do you do two steps forward? Oh, this is capturing. Oh, oh, okay, okay. So, you could say something like this. Oh, you have a comment here. Handling a potential attack. Say you could do this, and then if you're a white pawn. So yeah, if you make a class for your collection, you could do fancy stuff like add if enemy. And it's nice and 
short, very not verbose with all those checks. Uh, well, you might need like selected piece in here. I don't know. I don't have all the details. I'm not running the program or anything. I'm just pseudo coding it just uh, just brainstorming, you know? Yeah, the custom collection class probably only has a few add methods and maybe has a function to return the array list contained within it. You don't have to implement a full collect. You don't have to implement the Java collections. Probably you don't want to implement the Java collections thing because you're not implementing a general purpose collection. You're implementing a very specific purpose collection. So you don't want to use it like a normal Java collection. Most collections that you make yourself are not used like the standard collections. So don't deal with their hierarchy of interfaces and stuff. Don't bother with that. This this whole separation of vertical movement, diagonal movement, and, and horizontal doesn't make sense. You're not even following the rules because you're allowing the pawn's diagonal movement, uh, like the attacking, you're handling that in the vertical movement function. That really should belong in the diagonal movement. I don't think you should have three functions. I think you should just have one. Give me all the movement options. What do you do with knight? Unique movement. Oh, you even have a fourth thing. <laughs> And why, why is there another interface? I don't understand your interfaces. I bet you one Satoshi that you should just delete all your interfaces and you're not gonna see any impact on the rest of your code aside from removing all these override things, which will be fine. I don't think you need those interfaces. You're not using anything. Yeah, the movement and unique movement interfaces, get rid of them. Fresmo, I'd like to see how your code turns out when you go through and totally change everything. <laughs> I'd like to see how it goes. Because uh, there's other aspects I'd like to discuss, like the thing you linked, the repetition here. We could take a look at that. We'll see how the other stuff goes first. I never implemented chess, actually. Probably should do that. Want to improve your coding skills? Coming out at twitch.tv slash dragger. I give free code reviews and lessons every weekday.